In the mid-2000s, famous film critic Roger Ebert described video games as a non-artistic medium incomparable to the more established art forms. This simple remark resulted in multiple debates between Ebert and other prominent figures, such as authors, video game developers, other critics, and online content creators. Over the years, I believe that video games have established enough of a spark of artistic merits that games are widely recognized as an art form now, albeit still in its infancy. Even Ebert went back on his original statement, conceding that games may indeed be art, albeit in a non-traditional sense. However, most of the artistic merits attributed to video games have been given to development phase, be it in its graphical or visual design, writing, programming, or teams and influence in its narrative structure. What I want to propose in this video is far more ambitious and perhaps controversial. I believe that the action of playing video games can be considered as an art form, with small caveats. The first thing I'd like to compare video games to is sports, although the notion of sports as an art form is also contentious. The more aesthetic sports often gets a leeway with this notion given the creativity asked of its athletes and the pairing of visuals aesthetics often with a musical component. As for competitive sports, Dr. Tommy Wallstrom wrote in a 2021 article for the Sports Digest, Sport is and will always be connected to art. Sport is an expression of humanity such as art. It is an expression of the human spirits in its many forms. It is part of human nature to want to compete and test one's limits. They, the athlete, push human potential to its extreme limits and help us evolve physically and psychologically. In many ways, art does the same. You've probably noticed the hockey game playing in the background. It's not other than the 1980 Lake Placid Miracle on Ice game. We have all heard of this mythical moments in sports history, often recounted in other forms of media, such as movies, paintings, songs, and other artistic endeavors. From the legendary conquest of the said hockey game to Buster Douglas' incredible upset over a prime Mike Tyson, or acts of incredible sportsmanship, such as Judy Guinness willingly losing a gold medal by informing the officials that her opponent, Ellen Priest, had touched her twice in their fencing bout. The hits had gone undetected and she was on her way to win the gold medal. Instead, she relinquished the win through sportsmanship. So if skill and mastery is a form of artistic expression, at least at an extremely high competitive level, wouldn't the same logic be applied to esports? What about speedrunning? Players push their knowledge and execution to the maximum to achieve ridiculous feats, often breaking the intended way to play the game. But what about the artistic merits of player expression in non-competitive contexts? Well, what if I were to compare the video game software merely as an instrument? The access to recording devices as well as methods to share these recordings enabled players to showcase their skills, often compiles in video format with music and editing. Although some of the art expressed here comes through the editing and music choices, the main art form displayed is through a player skill, much like a guitarist displaying incredible shredding technique. <laughs>
of all the fights in the darkness, trouble sparks. They tell me home is where the heart is, they departed. I shed tattoo tears and couldn't sleep good for multiple years. Witness fears, scabs, gunshots, nobody cares. Seen the politicians ban. A fair criticism that viewers of this video might have at this point would be that all the example provided that player's artistic expression through gameplay was entirely based on the notion of skill display. Which, granted, is a fair assessment. After all, much like music, not every songwriter is the most talented virtuoso of their given instrument, and they can reach artistic expression through their writing or even the emotions in their performance. Well, this might come as a cop-out, but with the recording and sharing brought about previously in the last point, also came the world of content creation and sharing. For this point, instead of the software being compared to an instrument, what if instead it was a notepad or a script? Wait a second. What the hell is that music? Oh, hey ha! The natural I call run shotgun! Blammo! Ha <laughs> ha! Machinima was an instrumental tool in the development of video games being used as a vehicle to convey original story, and although the artistic expression might come here from the writing, editing, and other more traditional forms of art, the directing and acting, in the sense of the action, is conveyed through playing the game. And if this is too much of a cop-out, then just consider the fact that a player showcasing their emotion or their reaction to a certain gameplay element also constitutes as a new form of art expression. We usually do. Uh, All right, thumbs up. Ready, guys. Let's or... do this. Leroy Dragons. Oh my God, he just ran in. So, what if you aren't a competitive player, a skilled virtuoso, or a content creator? Is the act of simply playing the game your way a manifestation of your artistic side? Well, short answer is it depends on the game. The long answer is what if your actions and the way you approach the game created a meta-narrative that you alone experienced. You ever had that moment where you beat a boss with a single hit point left, or you solved that really challenging puzzle through a method you didn't think was possible? These interactions are yours alone, and although the characters and their actions on screen are not an extension of your creative expression, they transform you into the writer of your own narrative experience, even if it does so subconsciously. Let's expand on that a bit. So you are a Link, and you just saved Princess Zelda after slaying the transformed Ganon. The story beat is scripted, and every player will experience it the same way, right? That's true, however, if you spoke to your cousin, your friends, your neighbors, about how that fight went, and that fact it was so climactic and you had to use the arrows of light until Zelda threw the Master Sword, what are the chances that Jimmy, the next door neighbor, just tells you, oh yeah, I beat it with the Garn Sword? Or your, your neighbor uh, says, well, yeah, well I did, did it with the Oak Shot. Or, oh yeah, I used the hammer. Pretty high, right? So that climactic, down-to-the-wire struggle is your own personal little story that you, quote-unquote, wrote through your gameplay. And what about games that don't rely on any end-holding or have a much looser approach to how the player experiences the story or the gameplay? FromSoft are now revered as the geniuses of game design, behind masterpieces such as Dark Souls and Elden Ring. The open nature of Dark Souls, and by extension Elden Ring, which essentially lets the player choose their own path through the game, the difficulty aspect and the vague nature of the lore makes it a perfect recipe to create and experience your own narrative. Just talk about the game with other players, and notice how drastically different most players' experience through the game is. Without getting bogged down by a definition of heart, these are the main reasons that make me believe that the action of playing a video game can be considered as an art form, even though it might not be as tangible as traditional forms of art. I want to leave you guys with some of the most interesting works of art derived from video games. While not entirely related to the act of playing, the way these players share their thoughts and what they experience through playing some of these games is incredibly inspirational, and conveys just how deep and transcendental some of these games can be. Gamers, but have never played a Metal Gear Solid game, you are obligated to at least listen to this final conversation. Not only will you be enlightened by its philosophical commentary, but you will be terrified by its implications as I have been for my entire life. What I'm getting at is, through Silent Hill, there's a lot of references to the occult, to magic, to alchemy, um, all sorts of really cool stuff, and we'll explore that in detail.
If you've enjoyed this content, please consider giving a like and subscribing, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.